In this video, I'm going over the price offer curve and the income offer curve and how those relate to the demand function and the angle curve. And once you realize how these things relate to each other, it's much easier to think about them. They're not really four separate things. They're really all part of the same process for thinking about modeling. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to draw all four of these curves and how they relate to each other, but I'd like to start by outlining where I'm going and how I got here. All right, so the four things I'm going to draw are price offer curve, demand curve, income offer curve, and angle curve. And these are going to relate to the model that is the utility maximization model subject to a budget constraint. All four of these are derived from this and they're all going to be manifestations of comparative statics. So first, what is comparative statics? Comparative statics is the whole point of microeconomic theory. It basically allows us to do thought experiments to see what would happen to human motivations and human decision making in counterfactual situations. So in a model, we've got our choice variables, which the person, whoever's perspective this is from, chooses. But we also have some exogenous variables, and in this case we have three exogenous variables, which are px, py, and m. And all of this relates to um, what happens to the choices in response to a change in either price or the amount of money we've got. So that's what comparative statics is. It's where we change one of the exogenous variables in the model and we see how optimal choice responds. Okay, so here we're basically, we're gonna change the price and see how does quantity demanded respond. And keep in mind that this x, x star is different from this x up here. This x up here can take on any value and we're gonna graph different values of x if we're talking about this x. This x down here is the solution to the model. It's how many units of good x are we actually going to buy. It's the optimized quantity. So we want to see when we change the price, how does quantity demanded change? And I mean, you can probably guess this is going to go down, but how much does it go down? That's something we might ask if we are in charge of a company. And same with M. If we increase the budget that people have to spend, how does the optimal choice of this good change? And that's what we're doing up here with these graphs is we're deriving that graphically. All right, so there's basically two exogenous variables to change, price and money. And of course, well, there's three, but these two are kind of, they kind of behave in the same way. And we're going to look at them on different graphical spaces. So um, the XY space, this is the space where we graph our budget constraint. It's the space where we graph our indifference curves. That's going to make up the space of price offer curves and income offer curves. And then um, over here, our demand function and our angle curve are derived from each of these, showing the optimal choice, that is x star, not x, but x star, the optimal choice, versus the exogenous variable that we're changing, so that we've graphed every single possible response to a different price or a different income that we could come up with. And these are very parallel in terms of how they're derived. So, Let's take this and I'm going to draw one graph for each of these functions. Okay, so according to this, we're going to label our axes and we know the two offer curves are going to be in the space of X, good X, whether that's chocolate or bananas, good Y, maybe that's books or CDs. And both of the offer curves are going to be in that space, meaning we can graph budget constraints and indifference curves, which we will do. And then the axes for these curves are going to be x star, the optimal choice of x, which we need to derive over here, versus price, that's our demand function. So we know that x star is quantity demanded in this model. And then we have x star down here, our optimal choice of x, and that's going to be versus m, versus a person's income or their, but their total budget that they can spend on this axis. So let's zoom in and look at the price offer curve first. All right, to think of this, we're going to choose three different prices to look at. And that means we're gonna have three different budget constraints. And I'm just gonna label this with three prices, remembering that our most rotated out budget constraint is going to have the lowest price. Okay, so we've, we've got some prices, and we actually know that we're gonna graph these prices over here on our demand curve. So I'll just set up our demand curve for that. 
Now we need to find the optimal choice in response to these. And of course we know that the optimal choice is going to be associated with um, the place where the indifference curves are tangent to our budget constraints. So maybe I will use blue for this and I'm going to come up with three optimal choices associated with each of these budget constraints. All right, so I've found three optimal responses. Um, one is associated with the budget constraint that's got a price of 15. This, the next is associated with the budget constraint that's got a price of 10. And the final um, optimized choice here has, is associated with the budget constraint with a price of five. So I'm going to map these pairs. So, all right, and now I've labeled this. This is where we're buying three of good X. This is where we're buying six of good X. And this is where we're buying 11 of good X. And so what I wanna graph over here on the demand curve is the pairs of prices associated with optimal choices. Here we've got three, at, we, we buy three when the price is 15. So let's graph that over there. And then we purchase six when the price is $10. That's our optimal choice at that point. So if we come over here, we can find that. And finally, when the price is, and finally, when the price is five, which I mislabeled here, but I just fixed that. When the price is five, we buy 11 of them. So the price is lower and we're gonna buy. Okay, so we've found three different points on our demand function. And it's not linear, like most demand curves are not gonna be linear, but we can kind of do some thought experiments over here where we're imagining, what if we reduce the price to $3? What if we increase the price to $20? What if we change the price to $11? And we're imagining all of these scenarios and each of them is going to have an optimized point. And we might accurately figure out that actually if you connect the optimized points for each of these, there's going to be a smooth line sort of running through these. And this smooth line is our price offer curve. And over here, we can connect these dots assuming that we've done the uh, visual optimization for all these other points and it's gonna run our line over here at the demand function is certainly going to run through the three points that we've already found um, and that's how we derived our demand function. Now this one doesn't necessarily need to go through the origin, in fact probably won't go through the origin because as we do this thought experiment of changing the price to get each point on the line, um, Getting closer to the y-axis, this is basically the price of x going up and up and up. So the price, the quantity purchased of x is definitely going to go to zero. But you might buy a positive amount of good y when the price of x is essentially infinite. So this probably won't even go through the origin. Um, so this is just our price offer curve that I've derived based on the way I've drawn these budget constraints and indifference curves and I've mapped it over here to our demand function. So what we're finding here is that we've actually derived our demand function starting from this optimization problem where we're maximizing utility subject to a constraint. And that's one version of comparative statics where we're changing price and seeing how optimal quantity responds. And we're basically gonna do the exact same thing when we're going through our exercise of changing the amount of money people have and changing the budget constraints here. Now, of course, up here we were changing price, so our budget constraints were sort of rotating in and out. But down here we're gonna be changing money, so these budget constraints are gonna be shifting in and out. But it's the same exercise at deriving optimal choice over here and then pairing the amount of money with the optimal choice over for our angle curve. So let's do that. So now we've got our price offer curve and we're gonna draw three budget constraints just like we did up here with different amounts of money for each. $100, $200, $300, and we are going to optimize over here by finding the optimal choice at each of these three points and then graph over there. Okay, so I've optimized where um, when we have $100, we're going to choose to buy eight of good X. So X star when M equals 100 is eight. When our money increases to 200, we're going to, the optimal point here is at 
x star equals 13, we're going to buy 13 of the product. And then when our money increases to 300, the optimal choice, when we solve the model, is going to be we're going to buy 22 of the product. And so we're going to graph these over there. So I've just graphed these three points, the x star of 8, 13, and 22, associated with each of the amounts of money, and we can connect the dots to get our angle curve over here. And our angle curve will definitely go through the origin because if m is zero, you're gonna be able to buy zero of x star, so that will go through the origin. And then this one will also go through the origin. The price offer curve will also go through the origin. Because the price offer curve is constructed by imagining that we're changing the budget constraint to every possible amount of money. It's going to shift in and out parallel. And as our money approaches zero, we're going to be approaching the origin. So that's why the price offer curve does have to go through the origin. And now we've derived our price offer curve, we've derived our angle curve, and this is just a result of doing the comparative statics by changing the amount of money in our model and seeing how optimal choice responds to that. So just to summarize, we've derived each of these four curves by changing one of two exogenous variables in our model, in our original model that's utility maximizing with a budget constraint. We changed the price of good X, we changed the amount of money we had, and we graphed it in two graphical spaces. One was our classic XY space, and the other was X star, which is the solution, the optimal choice in our model, and versus the exogenous variable that we're changing. And by doing that, we got a positive or negative relationship here. We can see our demand function when you increase price. Uh, quantity goes down, that shows up on our demand function, so we can definitively say that yes, yes, there is a negative relationship between price and quantity, that's the law of demand. And we see when we increase our amount of money we have that there's a positive relationship, so x star goes up when m changes. And we can look at this graph to see exactly how much less people buy when the price goes up, or how much more people will buy when their income goes up, so it gives us functional forms that we can actually work with for that, which is the point of comparative statics. And of course, these are fairly obvious. Most people can intuit that these relationships are true, but in a lot of our models, it's not necessarily obvious, the relationship between the exogenous variable and the optimal choice, which is why this process of going through the comparative statics is really useful if you want to be able to do thought experiments on counterfactual things that might happen, and that includes counterfactuals on policy. So I hope you found this helpful when thinking through price offer curves, income offer curves, demand functions and angle curves, and how they all relate to each other, how they all relate to the classic model, and, um, and the different setups we have for each.